So let's talk about compressor selection. How do we select the correct compressor? We've got these different ratings that compressors have. Some compressors are rated for the flow rate in. Okay, so you can just get a compressor that's rated for S, C, F, M. A lot of compressors, more so, are rated for the outlet flow rate. But the outlet flow rate is actually dependent on the pressure. Because as I turn this thing, if this thing is adjustable, what's going on, that's my pressure regulator, what's happening is that the flow rate out here is going to be different. And the pressure is going to be different. So the pressure and the flow rate are linked together. And that's because of the gas laws. The reason they're linked together is because if I increase the pressure, then I'm compressing gas. So the volume of the same amount of gas that's coming in here has changed. It's gone down. So actually, as I increase the pressure, my flow rate availability goes down. As I decrease the pressure, the gas is actually expanding. So what's happening is that I'm getting actually more volume of gas out here. So this actually changes quite a bit depending on how much pressure I set it to. So my question is, okay, so how do I select my compressor? I mean, my the, whatever's downstream here, all these actuators and things that are going on, and my whole pneumatic system requires, say, 3 CFM or 5 CFM. Well, it requires 5 or 3 CFM at a specific pressure. So when we define the, the flow rate uh, for all of our actuators, we have to actually say what the pressure is of, um, that's actually running them. So from there we also have to know what the pressure is, what the available pressure is here for our compressors. For instance, you saw in that PowerPoint before that the pressure, the, the compressor is rated to a CFM that's linked to a pressure and often they'll have two different availabilities. So the smaller ones will only have one. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to look at examples where the outlet for this is my compressor here and the outlet flow will be rated with a specific flow rate at a pressure. But the problem is we're actually using a different pressure. So will that work? Is there a way to convert that? If this says 4 CFM at 90 PSI and we actually are running at 7 PSI but we need 5 CFM, is it going to work? Because I'm running it at 7, sorry, did I say 70? Yeah, 70 PSI. So if I'm running at 70 PSI, well then, if I were to turn this thing down to 70 PSI, the flow rate would go up from 4 to whatever, it would go up. Would it go up to 7 or I mean, would it go up to 5? Where would it go? There's a way to calculate that. So the way that we calculate that really is, is really all about like we can look at transformers. Now, you guys understand transformers, so I think we'll kind of start with transformers and we're going to make sense here. But in both cases, we have a fixed power going in. I think that's important that we understand that. So over here, my compressor, it's got a fixed power coming in. So it's got 100 watts driving it. It could be because it's running on a gas motor or even um, an electric motor. Or we could run this like on a waterfall or something. The waterfall concept actually works better over here. So. What we've got here is we've got a generator and we've got a shaft that's turning my generator. That shaft has a certain amount of mechanical power. Again, whether it's coming from another electric motor or whether it's coming from a gas or a diesel engine or maybe a waterfall or, or some other way of generating power, even solar, whatever it is, we've got some kind of fixed power coming in here and that's giving me 100 watts. So I have 100 watts to play with. But as you know, wattage is current times voltage. So if I put the current up and the voltage down, or the current down and the voltage up, as long as I balance the two, it's okay. Same concepts going on here. Let's just kind of do the math over here and we'll see this work. Okay, so we know that, let's say I had a transformer, and it was a variable transformer. So we can equate this to this guy. So my pressure regulator is my variable transformer. My voltage over here is the pressure. And the current over here is the flow rate. Okay, so I think you guys are good with that. Let's move on here. I know that my power on the primary is the same as the power on the secondary. So I could also say the current on the primary times the voltage on the primary equals the current on the secondary times the voltage whoo, times the voltage on the secondary. Right. So what I have here is I've got 10 volts and 10 amps on this side. Over here, 
I actually need eight volts instead. I don't need my 10. So I'm gonna change the manner of this so that I get eight volts over here, or just like this, I'm adjusting this. I have an adjustable transformer, so I'm adjusting. I don't need 10 volts. 10 volts is coming out of this thing, but I don't need 10 volts. I need you know, eight. So what do I do? Well, I adjust this. So what's gonna happen to my flow rate? Well, if you rearrange this, I'm gonna isolate for this. I secondary is gonna be equal to I primary times voltage primary divided by voltage secondary, and that's gonna equal 12.5 amps. And if you sit on that for a sec, I think it makes sense. I've lowered my voltage, so my current has gone up. But the two are balanced. This side and this side are balanced. And that's kind of what I have to kind of show you over here. Over here what's happening is that this thing is set to a certain flow rate, or the whole system, if you set it to a certain flow rate, will give you four cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI. But what happens if I change it to 70 PSI? How much will my flow rate go up? Well, there's a formula for that, but it's not quite as simple as this. These numbers are relative to zero. We have to use numbers that are relative to zero. So our pressures have to be an absolute. And that's really all. All we have to do is change our pressures to absolute, and then we can work with that. So it's that simple. So let's go through this PowerPoint and kind of see some examples and see the math taking action. So let's take a look at how we choose the right compressor and what flow rates are all about and how it all kind of fits in and works and what's pressure all about. Like, how does pressure affect flow rate? Well, we're just going to see that happen in the math, but I think you get that concept from that example that we did on the board with the, the generator, with the, ge the generator and the transformer. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to study flow rates kind of from two different ways. Um, compressors are rated at a particular flow rate. Let's take a look at this one. So we know this guy, if we run it at 90 PSI, it will give us four CFM. If I were to crank that down to 70, that four CFM would go up. Now, how much would it go up? For instance, watch this. If I kick that down to 45, does that go to eight? The answer is actually no. You'd think so because, I mean, all of these things are relative to each other. So if the temperature doubles, then the pressure doubles and stuff like that, that's how it works. But in this case, my pressure is not doubling or the pressure is not going down to half if I kick it down to 90 to 45 because we have to deal with relative pressure to zero. We have to deal with absolute pressures. So always you have to calculate an absolute pressure when you're doing this stuff. So what we're gonna see here is that we're gonna see if we take this down to 45, that won't go to eight, but it probably go to like maybe 6.8 or maybe seven or something. So um, <clears throat> that's what's going on. So when you look at these things, you have to think about what your system is using, what the pressure in your system is using and how much flow rate you actually need. And then you can actually do the math to figure it out. And the math is what we're gonna do. So let's take a look at the math. There are two ways to do this. So one is I've got a compressor that's rated for my outlet. And I know that I can change my uh, pressure. So I can change this pressure regulator so that I am going to get a different pressure out. But the manufacturer says, if I set this to 90, my flow rate will be 4 CFM. Okay, well, I need it at 70 or some other number. So what's going to happen? So I've got what the compressor is rated for, and I know what I'm going to turn it to. So I have to calculate if that's going to work, if this thing is actually going to give me enough flow rate at this pressure. So at the new pressure. So the other way is that actually some of these things are rated for the flow rate that goes into the compressor. And we don't actually discuss the pressure um, that goes into the compressor because we know the pressure. It's 14.7 A. Yeah. Um, so the, or 14.7 PSI A specifically. We know that it's just atmospheric pressure that's going into the compressor. And actually sometimes that atmospheric pressure is really low. Like if we're on a, a you know, if up in an airplane. So you have to keep that into consideration as well. So, um, but yeah, however it is, the same formula is used at the top and the bottom. So the same formula is used for a compressor that is rated for outlet flow. And the same formula is used for a compressor for inlet flow, except for the inlet flow where it's using 14.7. Or we could be using a lower number depending on how high we go up. So the two calculations are pretty much the same. Right now we're gonna focus two examples on this and we're gonna do one example on that. Let's get rolling. So, um, so yeah, this is, this is more walking through what I just said. This way is used, uh, okay, so 
This way is used when the, the CFM out is regulated. So when, when the compressor is rated in CFM at a per particular pressure, we're gonna look at two examples there. And you can see, I've got the flow rate here and the flow rate there. It's kind of like the transformer, the flow rate before and after kind of, kind of thing. So just roll with that. So follow me through these examples and you'll get it. Over here, this is when our, our compressor is rated for the inlet air, which is SCFM or ACFM or ICFM, and you guys know that. Okay, so here's that same example where we're looking at a transformer in and a transformer out. And by the way, Q times P is power. It's amazing how, I just love how these formulas like cross disciplines. It's the same formula, but just different characters, right? So different letters. So yeah, essentially we know that the power on one side of a transformer is equal to the power on the other side of the transformer and power is current times voltage. Well, in this case, over here, my power going in is the same as my power going out minus the losses, but we won't talk about the losses. Um, and the power over here is actually Q times P and the power over here is Q times P. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So that's power equals power and that's how we can convert these things. If we take a look at this example here, so we have a pneumatic system manufacturing plant and we've got, um, everything's running on 110 PSI. Now when I say PSI, I mean PSI G or PSI. They are the same thing. Whenever you see just PSI and, well, whenever you see just PSI, they're talking about the gauge pressure. If you see PSI A, they're talking about the absolute pressure and or the atmospheric pressure. So we've got 20 linear actuators and 10 rotary actuators. The rotary actuators use actually a lot more air to run. So we've got some numbers here. Altogether, the linear actuators require one cubic foot of air and the rotary actuators require two. So we can do the math and we can figure it out that it's three altogether and it's at 110 PSI. So that's the stuff that's coming out of the compressor, out of this guy right out here that we need our compressor to have this flow rate, that flow rate there, 110 PSI at three cubic feet coming out of here. Now I may have a compressor that is not rated at 110 PSI, but we'll work with that. So let's see what's going on. Okay, I do. So uh, my compressor is rated at 90 PSI and at four. Now I need three at 110. Will that cut it? Will it cut it? Well, we have to do the math and we cannot do the math unless we calculate this 110 PSI in PSI A. So that's the first thing we gotta do. We gotta change it over. Um, so this is just kind of more concept of taking a look at what's going on here. These are the gas law and time. So this is the development of the formula of, for flow. So we've, we've already kind of gone over this, but by the way, if we were doing this and we had a a little bit of adiabatic coming in here. So essentially, if I did have not an isothermal reaction, so my, my gas coming out was actually pretty hot, I would put my temperatures in. But if they're within, you know, five, 10%, you're okay. Because you overrate these things anyway. And we will overrate this stuff in a little bit, in a few more slides. We'll do a little bit of overrating. But for now, as long as the temperature is pretty close, you're good, just leave it out. So. Yeah, as we add time in, we know from that other slide, just go back here, we know from this other slide, it's so cool, you add time to both sides of the formula, and all of a sudden, you get volume over, over time, and that's a flow rate, so now we've got P times flow rate times T. Okay, so we know that, and that's that kind of what's what I'm talking about in this slide. Okay, so here we go. Let Q1 be the compressor rated flow rate um, to the system requirements. Okay, so what's going on here is that I've got, <clears throat> I've got these two symbols on either side of the regulator. It's kind of like the before and after. So before the regulator was set to 90 PSI and it gave 4.2. Now, why does it say 4.2? Uh, this says 4.2, just pretend it says 4.0, okay? So let's roll forward. So at 4.0 CFM at 90 PSI. Now I'm, I'm setting it, I'm changing this regulator to 110. What's my new flow rate? Is it gonna be three? Is it gonna be below three? It should be above three. If it's above three, then I'm golden because my system needs three CFM. Okay, so let's do the math. First thing we gotta do is change it over to PSIA. That's just the first thing you gotta do. So you change it over to PSIA. Now, you know, we have two pressures, right? We've got my before pressure, my 90 and my 110. So I have to convert both of those. So I've done that there, I've done that there. And then I just throw it into my formula. I throw it into this formula or again, this formula, if I've got a really high temperature radiant, 
gradient, pardon me. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw the math in and you've got 104, so that's my ratio. And obviously the ratio is gonna be less, right? Because what's happening here is that my pressure is going up, so my flow rate is gonna go down. If you're like, if you get like blocked in your head, like how do I, what do I rearrange the formula? What's that guy? Dude, it's just like the voltage divider. It's just like the current divider. What's going on is that we've got some kind of ratio and we're multiplying it by the flow rate. The ratio is either higher or lower. Remember, we're looking for the new flow rate. So we're gonna multiply the new flow rate by some kind of ratio. That ratio has to be less than one. So I put my pressures in that manner. I put the lower pressure on top and the greater pressure on the bottom, and then I'm getting a ratio less than one because we know, just going back here, if this is at 90 and that's at 4.0, and I'm kicking this up to 110, my flow rate is going to go down because I'm compressing air. My volume is gonna get less because I'm compressing air. Okay, so, and that's the answer. So at 110 PSI, the compressor will deliver 3.36 CFM. Oh. All we need is three. Looks like we're good, okay? So therefore, the 20-year linear actuators and the 10 rotor reactors require CFM 100 PSI. Oh, that should say 110. So, <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, therefore, this compressor will be okay. Oh, but it might be working a little too hard. So that's a concept that we have to talk about a little bit later, but this will run it. It's just that it will be on a lot. Okay, let's continue to look at another example. So this example, a compressor is nice and quick and simple. A compressor is rated to five CFM at 80 PSI. So it, again, just I'll just explain this again. The manufacturer says, if you go over and you set your pressure regulator to 80 PSI, your flow rate, because it has a limited amount of power, the power plant, the, the actual prime mover in there can only give you a certain amount of watts. We're dividing that wattage up between current and pressure, okay, or flow rate and pressure. So if you set the pressure to 80 PSI, your flow rate will be five but we want this thing to run at 40 PSI and we want nine CFM. So I think I said CFI earlier, doesn't matter. Let's move forward. So what are we gonna do? Well, just do the math. First thing you gotta do is you gotta convert your PSI to PSI A. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just putting that right into my formula because I know it's understood that it's gonna happen. So I'm doing 80 plus 14.7. Again, you know what, let's take a look at this. If I'm, again, trying to figure out which formula I use, in this case, does my flow rate go up or does my flow rate go down? Again, I'm, I've got the unknown flow rate. Does it go up or down? Well, my unknown, okay, so I know my PSI is 40. Now, I wanna see if this five will go all the way to nine. So yeah, it's gonna be going up. So I'm gonna find a ratio of the pressures so that that ratio is greater than one. Well, that's easy. So I'm putting the higher pressure on top and the lower pressure on the bottom. You know what, go back to the formula and know these formulas and know how to rearrange them. But if you're just, your brain is like, you know what, which, how, which one again? Just think about it. It's good to, to understand both methods. Just remembering the formula, but remembering how the formula works as well is really the, the, what will empower you to use your formulas, to just wheel your formulas. Okay, so um, yeah, and it's 8.7. Okay, so, oh, we need nine. So it's not gonna work. It's pretty cool, let's take a look at this. So I've divided the pressure by half. Have I? Actually, I haven't. I've gone from 80 PSI, G, to 40 PSI, G, but that's not halving the pressure. That's just halving the numbers. Remember, this is not 80 PSI. This is 90, 94.7, and this guy's 54.7. So 94.7 and 54.7, that's not half. And that's why this number is not doubling, why I'm not going all the way to 10. And I think that just makes sense. So it does not double, yeah, because these numbers are not half. Okay, cool. So that's that example. So let's, this is CFM to CFM. Now let's take a look at SCFM to CFM. So reworking in the pressure. Oh yeah, this is just a continuation of this. Okay, so the regulator pressure is halved. Why doesn't it fall? Why does the flow rate double? We just talked about that in that last slide. So I think you guys get that because we're at 97.4 and 50.7, 54.7. That is not half of that. So let's continue. Now we're talking about SCFM. So we have a compressor that's rated for SCFM and it just gives you the SCFM. It doesn't give you the pressure because it knows the pressure is just atmospheric pressure. Okay. A pneumatic system in a manufacturing plant has 30 linear actuators and five rotary actuators. Altogether, the 
of the linear actuators required two cubic feet and the other ones require five cubic feet which makes sense because you know linear actuators often require a lot less flow rate than rotary actuators because rotary actuators really use a lot of air to spin okay they're all running on 100 psi okay so therefore we know the total amount of air that flow must flow into the compressor at all so it must flow out of the compressor at all times okay so the air coming out of here the air coming out of there has to be um seven cubic feet per minute at 100 psi so if i go over and i turn that thing that regulator to 100 psi the air coming out has to be seven cubic feet per minute can it do it well we have to calculate it okay so in this case what's going on is that i need to know what this is going to be so we're kind of working a little bit backwards we're looking we're kind of looking this way so what i'm doing is i'm trying to select a compressor I know that my compressor, I'm looking at a sheet with four or five different compressors on it, and some of them are rated in, in a cubic feet per minute at a particular pressure, and some of them are rated at SCFM. So I've got two or three rated SCFM. You know what, I've got to calculate what my required inlet air is going to be at 14.7A for my system to run at 147 a, oh, that should say A. That should say A. Oh, I have to fix that. Okay, I'll fix that. So I get a little upset there. Okay, so, at, see, uh, yeah, at 14.7 A. So I know that that's going to be a certain number. How do I calculate it? I just use the same formulas we've been using. Okay, so that is my 100 PSI there. And this is my breather air. Okay, what's the flow rate into the breather of the compressor? Right, I, need, I need that number right there. So I'm just going to do the math. Right, so I'm going to convert my pressures. That's already converted. One uh, one one four point seven is already converted, and that's fine because I needed a hundred before. So my outlet pressure is a hundred psi g, and <clears throat> my flow rate is going to have to be seven cfm. Okay, good. So what does my flow rate in look like if the air pressure going in is fourteen point seven a? All right. Well, I just put the numbers together again. Here I am with this ratio. I know my flow rate is going to be a lot higher. The reason actually the breather flow rate is really high. That's a that's a number that's a pretty common number for a breather flow rate. The reason it's so high is because the air isn't even compressed. The volume is huge. So for every little bit of for every cubic foot that's coming out of that thing, I need like this much air, right? So there's a lot of flow rate going into that compressor. So that's a pretty high number and that makes sense. We're looking for a really high number. So therefore I'm going to put my larger number on the top and my smaller number on the bottom. So now, yeah, obviously that's converted from um, 100 PSI. So there we go. Therefore the inlet flow rate required to create the outlet flow rate of seven CFM at 100 PSI is 55 S CFM. Now that's 54.6, whatever, 55. Cause you know what? I'm going to go over and I'm going to look on my chart for something that's more than 55. Okay, good. So, but like how much more? And what about like my runtime? So the thing is, let me just go back to this guy. If I selected a compressor that, you know, ran maybe 60, 60 CFM, it was rated for 60 CFM. Okay, well, if I select that, it's gonna be, it will turn off every few minutes for about 30 seconds and then it'll come back on again or it'll just be on and off and on and off and on and off all the time it will be really be running a lot for instance if i actually went and chose a compressor that was 55 scfm it would just be running all the time we need to have these things so that they have a break they need to be running half the time they shouldn't be running more than half the time so if this if your compressor is running if your system needs to be running for an hour, your compressor should only have half an hour of runtime. Around there. Less is better. So what we do is we decrease it. So essentially, we're looking for a, 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 a SCFM of twice as much. And or if, I, if, my, if my compressor is rated to CFM at a particular pressure, whatever it is, I'm going to go get a compressor that's rated twice as much. So essentially, I'm just kind of taking, I'm manipulating the runtime, or I'm just doubling the pressure. However you want to look at it, that's what's going on. So always double your rating for your compressor when you go and select a compressor. And if you have a compressor that is will give you 5 CFM at 50 PSI, and you need to run it at 50 PSI, you should not run it on a system that requires more than 2.5 CFM. 
think that makes sense too. Okay, so the receiver tank. Now, you guys won't be doing any calculations for receiver tanks because you're not going to be designing your own compressors. If you do get into that, you're probably going to have to take another course in pneumatics or you're going to have to, like, you know, get up to speed on things. But I want to give you the kind of heads up on how we rate these, uh, how, how we rate the tanks. So here's a formula for rating tanks K is my safety factor, and that's my flow rate out. That's the time. Now, the time, well, we'll talk about what the time is. And these are my pressures. So now that's atmospheric pressure. So whatever the atmospheric pressure is. So in this case, it's it's important. So our receiver tank is dependent on atmospheric pressure. Again, if I'm up a mountain or if I'm on an airplane, this formula is going to give me a different number than if I'm you know down on the um, on a on a ocean vessel. Okay, so that makes sense. So let's just take a look at what these numbers are. Okay, so V is the volume of the tank itself. In the end, the larger the tank the more reservoir you have. Your tank is like your capacitor in your system. It will allow for a lot of fluctuations. And once you pressurize that tank, it will run your system for a certain amount of time. And then once it gets below a certain pressure, your compressor will come on and fill the tank again. So the larger the tank actually, the longer um, you can run your system for. So we know that PA is for atmospheric pressure. That's, it will always be constant or this, or actually depending on where you are, right? System working pressure, PSIG, so whatever it is. So that's actually a PSIG that goes in there. That's actually your system working pressure. You actually put PSIG in there. And now the reason we put PSIG in there is actually because this guy is converting it to PSIA. Okay, good. So um, safety multiplication factor, two or three. So always double it, or if you do three times as well, your, your tank is gonna be just that much bigger and it will hold your pressure longer, but at least two for this safety factor and you're good. So when you're designing these. So the standard time is about one minute. <clears throat> Essentially what you're doing, the time is all about how long you want your compressor to run for to fill the tank. So one minute is good. So the tank and the compressor have to kind of match each other. If I have this little tiny compressor and this huge tank, then my compressor is gonna take like half an hour or an hour to fill it. Well, no, that's not going to happen. I need to get a compressor that can fill this tank in one minute. So this is your number and there we go. So that's it. So at this point, you guys are now experts. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. You guys know that I will do another video for you or whatever you guys need for to empower you with this understanding and knowledge. Go through the homework. Check out the homework. If you have any questions that I will do um, I will do a short video on the homework, but essentially the homework is what we just covered. I mean, all of these questions are similar to the homework. Let me know. Okay, bye.